A great way to get hands-on experience and actually develop real cybersecurity skills and get experience is to have a home lab. You hear people say it all the time. Sometimes they can be expensive. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to build a very inexpensive home cybersecurity lab using nothing but a Raspberry Pi and a couple things you have around the house and be able to get those offensive security skills doing web application pen testing and understand some core cybersecurity concepts if you're really new to the game. Coming up. Hey everybody, welcome to Simply Cyber, the YouTube channel designed to help you make and take a cybersecurity career further, faster. I'm your host, Gerald Lozier, and on this channel, we put videos together on the cybersecurity industry, interview experts across the fields, and tell you about tools and how to use them, including how to build home labs much like today. If that's something that's interesting to you, why don't you check out the other channels on the video after this one and maybe hit subscribe. We're putting out videos every single Monday. Now, real quick, be sure if you just want to jump to the, the juice of the video, look at down below in the show description. I put minute markers in all my shows so you can just jump to the bits you want or you can just enjoy and watch the whole video and that's fine. Be sure to stay tuned to the end as I always have my one cool thing. Now, this particular episode is going to be part of that playlist of pen testing tools that I've been developing, but I actually got a comment from one of the subscribers, uh, Gosu Cool here. Uh, so hey, thanks for the comment and I appreciate that. Now, all of these videos I've been doing in this free pen tester lab companion playlist that's following Stefan Waldvogel's uh, list of labs and tools and tricks that you can do to develop your skills as both a pen tester and a blue teamer. I've been doing them in AWS, so check out those other videos. I did WebGo, Juice Shop, and Damn Vulnerable Web App uh, so far, but there's more to come. But I always do it in AWS, and he said to me, hey, can you do something in Raspberry Pi? And I said, sure, why not? Why don't we do that? So I went out and bought a Raspberry Pi. Now, if you want to follow along, this is the parts list in the software. I bought um, a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. It's got two gigs of RAM, not bad, right? I got this case. I've got some, you know, it's not my favorite case, but it's the one I bought. I had to buy a special uh, micro uh, HDMI to HDMI cable. So this version of the Raspberry Pi runs on USB-C and uses micro HDMI for its output. So just be aware of that if you don't have those cables already. And then you're going to need a micro SD card. That's the hardware side of it. On the software, you just go download a Raspberry Pi installer for the operating system that you're running plug your uh, micro SD card into your computer, run the loader, and it'll push the operating system Raspbian right onto the uh, SD card, and you're good to go. You plug that into your um, uh, Raspberry Pi after you assemble it, and you're good to go. So here's the parts on the top left, after I unbox them on the top right, and then after you assemble them there on the bottom, that's the finished Raspberry Pi product. It took me all of about five minutes. So for about $75, a couple days shipping time and five minutes of your personal time, you've got a full-blown, pretty powerful computer ready to go that's on your home network, right? So you can have that home lab without having to worry about, you know, the cloud or AWS or any other uh, concerns around that. Especially if you're dealing with like bad network connectivity, if you live in like a rural area and you can't depend on the internet, um, having that home lab is powerful. So I did have to get a, a um, I had a keyboard and an extra monitor. So you need those things. That's not part of what you're going to need. But just to get it configured initially, you can do the Raspberry Pi in headless mode, but that's extra work and I didn't want to do it. So I just set it up there. I do want to point when you configure the wireless, I did it on 5 gigahertz initially and had some serious performance issues. I switched it over to the 2.4 gigahertz and it worked fine. And then I SSH'd in, took all that hardware away. Now the little Raspberry Pi is sitting on my desk um, by itself, right? So... That's, that's what we're going for ultimately. I put this little video together. It's about 27 seconds, but I did it so you can stop and pause and follow along as you finish configuring your Raspberry Pi after you built it, right? So initial boot up, this is what it looks like. You're gonna set the country first. I set it for English in America. You set a password for the system. You configure the wireless network. You update the software and you reboot the computer. It's simple. Once it's up, you go into the start menu, go down to configuration, change interfaces to SSH, enable it. 
and then get the IP address for the uh, Raspberry Pi because when you SSH into it, you're gonna need it. That's mine right there, yours will be different, okay? So let's hop on to the command line and get busy with actually showing you how to do this. We are in our workstation and we're gonna secure shell into the um, Raspberry Pi. So Pi is the default um, username for the device. So we got this when we did the IP config. Now this is the password you set during startup, right? Remember we just did that a minute ago? And there you go. So this is the version of what I'm running. Okay, so first thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you get in here, and I'll post this all in the show notes, is do an app get update and an app get upgrade, right? So this is updating all of your app get stuff and making it nice and tight. Now I already ran this, so it should run pretty quick, but you're gonna to wanna to do this, it'll take a few minutes. Okay, so that's all perfect. So the next order of business here is we're gonna use curl to pull down the um, from docker.com the docker shell script, okay? Because, so with AWS, we're able to just do Docker, right? Super easy, pull Docker with um, yum. We have to do it a little different because we're using apt here. Uh, so we're gonna do this and then we're gonna run the uh, Docker shell script. By the way, you gotta use sudo. You could super user into root, but I'm just not doing that right now. All right. See, it says uh, Docker command already appears to exist on the system, which would seem right because I installed Docker uh, earlier just to verify this. But the good news is that it's run, right? So after you uh, run the Docker script, then you're going to run this uh, user mod command. And this is basically going to add pi as a Docker user. That's it. Super easy. So now you should have Docker fully installed and you can run the commands uh, Docker version just to verify that you do in fact have Docker correctly running. At this time I'm running version 19.0313. You could see my other uh, things here if you're interested. You could also run uh, Docker info to get some more information. It'll also tell you about your own um, architecture and chip and stuff like this. This is important here, I'm gonna tell you why. On the uh, Docker ones we've been doing in AWS, the AWS Linux machine we've been using, if you recall, is x86. This is an ARM chip, and you don't really need to know the difference between ARM and x86, you just have to know that the code is compiled differently for that chip architecture, which means we can't use the same WebGoat Docker container that we did in the AWS one. So this is where it's gonna change just a little bit more. So uh, we're gonna do, well, you know what I should tell you? If you wanna just verify that Docker's working correctly, you can do this Docker run hello world. And you see where it says hello from Docker, that verifies that you're doing it correctly. So we're gonna run sudo docker, sudo docker pull cambart webgoat 80 RPI. Now this is a webgoat instance that this individual converted and ported over to ARM architecture. So we'll run that, and I've already run this. Image is up to date, see, boom. And then we'll do sudo. Okay, so we're gonna do the docker run tac p port 8080, tac t from this cambert webgoes RPI. And there we go. All right, and I'll put it in the show notes before. I had a comment in my notes about doing uh, service Docker start, and uh, that wasn't working. But I definitely had it in my notes. So if you if you having any issues, um, let me know, and I'll I'll mention that. But this this is working without me having to run that command. So this is Docker um, launching the WebGoat instance. So we can now go to the. web server here, as soon as this thing looks like it's good to go. I think we might be good. And there we go, see it's the IP that you have at port 8080, which is what we defined when we launched the Docker at WebGoat. So here we are, instead of being in AWS, it's WebGoat in a Raspberry Pi in our home network, everything's self-contained. So if you live in a cabin in the woods and you don't have access to the internet, 
well, you would need it in order to pull down the Docker containers, but maybe you do that on, you know, the mainland and then you go off to your cabin in the woods and you'd have your Raspberry Pi and you could work on attacking all this stuff. You wouldn't have to worry about internet access. You wouldn't have to worry about AWS if you had any concerns about them. And here you go. Boom. So hopefully this helps, um, you know, you, you folks out there who didn't want to use AWS, but you did want access. All right, so we've got WebGoat up on the Raspberry Pi, which is great. Now, I've also done Juice Shop and Damn Vulnerable Web Application. I started to do it. Um, I was going to do it on this Raspberry Pi also for those two, but it just, it was, a, it was I was having performance issues. So I will include it in the show description below on how you can pull the ARM uh, compatible architecture version of Juice Shop and Damn Vulnerable Web Application right here from the uh, this Docker container store and you know set up whichever one of the three that you like and you know get busy on your home network all right but now it is time for our one cool thing my one cool thing this week has nothing to do with technology but I think it's super cool it's uh it's mars-colony.life uh, website and it's basically like I don't know, this site that has all this information about like the colonization of Mars. It was just, it's got some interesting kind of infographics and stuff like that. It's, it's what about what we need to do to be able to colonize Mars. And, you know, it's, it goes into all these cool um, scientific things about the moons and the gravity and the temperature. It's like negative 63 Celsius there. That's pretty cold, obviously. Um, all right, so that'll do it for this week's episode of Simply Cyber. Really appreciate all of you uh, that how to get it into cybersecurity with no experience uh, talk I did for NIST the other day was like wildly well received. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you for supporting the show. Thank you for encouraging me. Thank you for commenting and engaging. I really, really enjoy uh, talking with all of you and helping everybody take their career further faster. Until next time, stay secure.